All right, this video is for you guys. You guys got me 50 likes on the last one and a thousand subscribers. That wasn't really a clause. It's just really awesome that we managed to hit that milestone. We still need watch hours for monetization, but I'm gonna be pumping out videos every couple of days here. So make sure you guys get subscribed so we can hit an even higher milestone, get this channel monetized so we can start making money off of this and then hopefully start getting some kind of sponsors so we can do even more dumb stuff because that would be great. <laughs> So what exactly are we doing today? Well today we're going to be overclocking the Ryzen 9 3950X 16 core processor on a cheap B450 motherboard that has no VRM cooling whatsoever. So we're going to try to get them as hot as humanly possible and we're going to need to be overclocking it to do that. And I'm going to do things a little differently this time by trying to play some video games on it. I'm, I'm probably going to play Cyberpunk because realistically it's the most demanding multi-core game out there right now. and this CPU has every right to absolutely murder this poor motherboard. <laughs> so to do that, we're gonna run some 16 gigabytes of pretty quick memory and a 3080, of course, because we need to get as many frames as possible going out of this thing. <laughs> I have it set up here next to the Asus Prime A320M board. Now, this was the board that we used in one of the first episodes of Coil Line, where we put this CPU in this motherboard and then got it as hot as possible, but because this motherboard doesn't support overclocking, it's kind of limited in that it will get up to a clock speed and then just kind of hold it there, and then eventually it'll start thermal throttling the VRMs and bringing the actual CPU speed down with it. So it's a complete waste to use a 3950X on this motherboard, but it does, surprisingly enough, work. So let's get this thing set up and start playing some games and see if we can't notice a thermal throttle right off the bat. These things are gonna get super hot. <laughs> All right, so we have it posted here. Um, just gonna go ahead and check the temperatures here on these VRMs. We're already up to about 50 C, which is, you know, okay, it's not too bad. Let's just go ahead and uh, run setup. Uh, let's go ahead and set the core ratio to four. Actually, you know what? Let's set this to auto. And then just turn on precision boost overdrive and see what it does on its own. All right, I don't know if you guys saw all that. <laughs> Let's go back to it real quick. So I'm gonna set it up real quick for just precision boost overdrive because I wanna get as many frames as possible out of this thing. Uh, I have it set kind of loose, like this should work. It works on my main system, but this is not my main system. <laughs> this has very weak VRMs and they're gonna be getting really hot. So let's just see what happens. Oh yeah the CPU fan air. So if you get a CPU fan air with a Asus motherboard, just go ahead and hit, go into the BIOS, hit F7, go over to monitor, and then CPU fan speed, and then just click ignore, and then save changes. That will just ignore it. I have no CPU fan plugged in right now because I have the AIO set up to just run like full speed when it's not plugged in, and I'd much rather it just running at full speed. Getting devices ready goes so much faster when you have 16 cores. I've been doing this with like two core phenoms so fast the past few days, and it is awful. Network 55. Don't mind me. So let's just go ahead and quickly demonstrate what happens when you run into a motherboard bottleneck. So right now we got all of our CPU cores just kind of banging out. Like that one hit above what I think 3950Xs are even uh, advertised to hit. Yeah, 4.7. So it's not doing too bad right now. Like it's running really good. Uh, let's see, where's our wattage at? So we got wattage going here. So let's just go ahead and fire up uh, Prime 95. And uh, you can't really do this with a 3950X. You can't hit, um, Small FFTs, it will normally just crash, so I go with smallest and hope it doesn't crash. All right, so we're pulling 213-ish watts, 4.2 all core, not, not too bad. It's doing really good. But watch what happens when we start to decay with heat. So 
We're up to 82 degrees Celsius. We're up to 113. There it is. See? There it is. You see it when it gets too hot? It starts dropping the wattage down to pretty much nothing. And this is pretty much instantaneous. Like, this is way faster than it was doing it on the 5800X, which is kind of impressive, but also that's what a 3950X does to things. So let's go ahead and stop that. Let's let it come back. It's, you know, it's operating just fine. We have relatively good temperatures. Like, it didn't even get that hot. 78 degrees C maximum. Not a big deal. 79 degrees C. Not a big deal for the CPU. Alright, where is Cyberpunk? I want to see what happens when you're playing Cyberpunk and you start to hit a CPU bottle or a motherboard bottleneck. Man, that freaking 3080 has so much coil wine. Get subscribed. Alright, well, so this is perfectly capable system of playing completely maxed out settings. I'm actually going to not run uh, ray tracing because I want to get as many frames as possible out of this because I want it to be more relying on the CPU. And the game's running at over 100 FPS. Let's see what the temperatures are. 70, 70-ish C. Yeah, the highest temperature I'm seeing is only 78 degrees, so it looks as if this is kind of acceptable in a sense. It's weird. Like, I guess gaming isn't a high enough load to, uh, you know, a high enough multi-core load to cause them to uh, thermal throttle the VRMs. So, uh, let's try something else. Let's try Cinebench. And it might be that the 3950X is so fast that it doesn't actually thermal throttle at all here because it can't get up to temp fast enough. Or it will get up to temp so fast that it does thermal throttle and then it affects your Cinebench score. That's where a Cinebench R23 with its like 10 minute cycle is probably better for this. They're getting up to 120-ish degrees C, but they didn't actually... Ooh. Let's run it again real quick. Let's run it back to back. Ooh, it's taken a while. Very interesting to see how well it makes it through a Cinebench. There it is. Now it's chugging along. Wow, that is brutal, what that does to your, your clock speeds. Oh, man. So it really doesn't affect it while gaming. That's impressive, because I guess there's just not enough load on multiple cores. But when you're trying to do something like this, where obviously if you're using all the cores, it will throttle all of them. And it throttles them hard. I mean, look at that. Look at that degradation in score. Going from, I think it was up in the 8,000s to down in the like the 4,000s, like under 5,000. Like, that is a huge amount of, of power to lose productivity. Like, you're almost down to a 6-core 8086K. Now, granted, I'm pretty sure that was running at like 5.3 gigahertz, but dang. All right, I'm just going to go ahead and overclock it real quick and see what we do. I'm going to do a loose overclock on it, probably kind of smash it with voltage so that we can use as much power out of those VRMs as possible and hopefully do even more damage. 4.4 <laughs> didn't work. Let's give it another um, 0 0.05 volts. It didn't like that. These VRMs are super hot to the touch. <laughs> Alright, some of you guys are going to yell at me for this. <laughs> Sometimes you just need more voltage, okay? This is a bronze bin 3950X, by the way, so like, I'm not hurting anything by degrading it. I just want to smash it. Like, it's got 16 cores, they all seem to work. It didn't like that either. <laughs> Don't prepare automatic repair. I know what's wrong with you, I did this. Don't diagnose my, oh my god. Man, trying to all core a 16 core 3950X is very annoying. Like, I'm just trying to pull a whole bunch of voltage out of this thing. Come on. I mean, I say I'm trying to pull a whole bunch of voltage. I'm really just trying to pull a whole bunch of current out of it. Whatever it takes to get those VRMs to melt. It just does not want to do it. I think really, 
Precision Boost Overdrive is the best bet here because it's giving me the, the highest wattage numbers. It's really just like, it's really a weird situation where, yes, if you're playing video games, you probably won't notice any changes here. Like, it, it's not going to throttle because it's not going to be able to get those VRMs hot enough to start throttling. But you didn't buy a 3950X to play video games, or at least I hope you didn't buy a 3950X to play video games. So if you're trying to do any productivity work, then you're going to run into some issues. And I am running into crap tons of issues right now. <laughs> Alright, I'm going to give it one last hurrah with, uh, with PBO. I'm going to set the PBO limits kind of more uh, conservative and hope that it will run another Prime 95 and see if I can't just crash it straight off of the Prime 95 because it can't supply it with enough power and it gets too hot too quick. It's very interesting to see how these things kind of react with each other. It's very hard to predict how these things are going to react with each other. Like you really want to see one of these just kind of like pop or start steaming or something, let the blue smoke out and then you just blue screen and it won't turn back on. Like that's what you would expect when you do something like this. But it doesn't, it just, it just goes into protection mode and, and or it crashes because these VRMs can't properly support or, what is it, uh, maintain, like, give it consistent power, and that might be what's causing it to crash, I don't know. Anyone who has, like, overclocked uh, a 3950X will know that this is not fun to do, it is kind of tedious because you're working with so many cores that if any single one of them has a problem, the whole thing will just come crashing down. And uh, I don't know about you, but uh, this many phases, like this is like what, six phase power delivery? It's probably not enough for this. All right, guys, I'm just gonna go ahead and show you something kind of funny. If you just hit small FFTs on a 3950X with it on like precision boost overdrive, and hit OK, it's probably just going to turn off. Yeah, just crashes. <laughs> it gets so hot so fast that it literally will just crash. I think I'm going to leave it there. It's really not a pleasant experience. I don't think this motherboard is remotely capable of dealing with 16 cores. If you're buying a 16 core processor, obviously you're buying something better than this, but uh, I really feel like this motherboard is perfectly good for those of you who are running just like a 6-core, maybe an 8-core, not really looking to overclock. You're going to use a stock prism cooler or, uh, what is the other one, a spire cooler, and it's just blowing air straight down at the, at the board, and it's getting air over those VRMs so that it can dissipate some heat. And if you run into any problems there, I don't know if you're like rendering videos or rendering pictures or doing a lot of stuff that runs multiple cores... But uh, you can go ahead and do some crazy stuff like I did with this one. Slap some heat sinks on there. Or you could have just bought a better motherboard to begin with. But if you're running into a problem with it and you need a, a cheap fix, that might be your cheap fix to get it going again. And very little stuff like that can make pretty big differences. So that's going to do it for today, guys. If you want to see me use a 2080 Ti cooler on a 3950X on this motherboard, go ahead and get me... 50 likes on this video, get subscribed for that video because you guys hit the, the like goal last time, I have no doubt you guys will do it again this time, and make sure you like this video even if you don't want to see a different video, <laughs> leave a comment on what kind of crazy garbage you want to see on this channel, join the discord, hit me up, ask me some questions, ask Zach some questions, and like always guys, have a great day.